Swing it is sorty. Let's get that booty. Hello, y'all. Welcome back to another episode of the Slam Cog Cast. Let's uh, jump right on in because, boy, has it been some gaming. Between me being busy and doing what I do, and like I said, I picked up a whole, uh, I guess you could say not really, but a pseudo, MMO, a faux MMO. Um, I'm having trouble finding time to watch anime. Uh, I got to reshift some things around. Hopefully... We will be able to do so, but all in all, let's jump in. What we've been playing this week, just last night, if you've been following us on the twitch.tv, we finished up a stream of The Evil Within 2, and I gotta tell you my opinion on that game, because it, it's amazing. Um, especially compared to the first game, I get the feeling that uh, if we would just hop right on in, in the deep end, as far as the experience overall... I get the feeling that this was supposed to be the journey of Sebastian Castellanos, and they mirrored that even in the gameplay. <clears throat> Excuse me. Because in the gameplay, if you think about the first game, it was all about him being unfamiliar and in a world that he's not familiar with, you know, where everything feels weird and off putting and he's just not in his element at all as a cop of the real world, you see. But in the sequel he goes in and it's like he knows what to do and he's familiar with it so you get stronger faster which is great taking too much time to get the tools that you're accustomed to from the first game would be an issue especially if you played the first game one of the biggest um tropes in game design is to get what the player can do in order to make them more helpless you know stripping you of your power in the earlier game now another thing that i love is it went it wasn't afraid to go in a different direction for a sequel you see the first game was about overcoming fear of the unknown and just walking around in things that make no sense you know but if i had to suffer through an entire second game of that ex same experience that i've already gotten i would have been completely disappointed i would have been tired of the whole back and forward of it before i even got halfway through the game i'd be like okay we play a scary game let's keep going this game was less about fear and more about the psychological thrill and i love that because the whole um it was a whole thing about this dude uh, what was his name giorno or some italian photographer who used to be a crime scene photographer and became a serial killer and he just became obsessed with taking pictures of dead bodies. That character was so amazing. And everything about him that led up to his fight was great. Because not only did they paint a picture of an artist that was struggling with his inner demons to create. But also they explored how off-putting and, 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 and uncomfortable a person could be who cannot interpret a new very macabre art you know what i mean it's it's the just position of what you're trying to hold on to and define as reality to something that's so sick and twisted and it's clearly not reality but it is this person's reality he made it a part of his by being this murderer and and it were it, it grounds you right back to it to say wait reality is that there's some people fucked up out here you know it makes a lot of sense and the way they executed what the, the things that he's done, like when he freezes you with the camera, the great idea, the use of the camera in the entire and everything in his themes and use of cameras. Beautiful. The fact that he freezes Sebastian and takes a knife and cuts a huge cut on the side of his face. Amazing, 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 amazing. Like I, I enjoyed it thoroughly. Um, and they did the you know they set it up with the premise of hey scary game but by the time the game ends you'll be thinking about things it'll make you introspective it'll, it'll have you searching within and making sense of who you are you know what i mean in your own mind and i love a game that does that successfully you know every character struggle with some type of mental battle but not in a sense of oh we're all depressed let's overcome it type of deal i mean as in this guy is a psychopath a highly functioning psychopath 
so not only does he have heavy sociopathic tendencies, but he also would choose to try to change the world because he sees himself as normal and everyone else as unhealthily strange and different and weird. And that's great. That's how you depict mental sickness in that sense. There is another character named Theodore or quote unquote what he calls himself Father Theodore. And he was a master at linguistic manipulation. Basically, he is a great guy using words to manipulate people. Um, most people would um, compare him to, say, um, what's the name of the guy? I forget the name of the guy in L.A. who had like the cult following and everything. Basically, cult leaders, people who can convince people to leave their life and come join up for their cause and, you know, believe in what they want. A snake charmer, so to speak. And he's so good at it that that type of mind put into a world where the, all brains are connected. Basically, the docket for this game's creation was, OK, we have within the lore a machine that connects people's brains together. What if we bring the most dangerous minds into this virtual world of connected minds and what would they do to that world and it shows in so many different ways the artistic psychopath would try to change it in artistic ways so it has metaphoric changes and you know great grandiose changes and in and, and, and depiction of music and and photorealism etc and and angles and and, and attention to detail whereas a cult leader and manipulative mindset would actually try to take over the place and indoctrinate everyone and shape it into his own image, carrying out a God complex, so to speak. And it's perfect. And the last influence that's very huge on the game, which is, you know, of course, spoilers here, is that his daughter turns out to still be alive and she did not die in the house fire from the first game but she was kidnapped and the house fire was a cover-up and his wife who was investigating the missing daughter their missing daughter turned out to be right and found out that there were you know higher powers that were you know operating this because they needed her their daughter for her mind being the core for a new project now here's the thing his wife is also still alive and she is in the system as well because they put her in there because she, she went in under the guise of I will keep her comfortable and stabilize her mind so that she can be the core for this simulation. But was she she really had ulterior motives to try to, you know, work together with people in order to pull her daughter out of the simulation. Now, of course, their last resort was to search out Sebastian, because not only was he the father, but also the only one capable of taking down the coup that took place on the inside because Father Theodore and the psychopath, I keep from, I think his name was like Giovanni or something, but um, they were both charged and put in to stem in order to help build the world you know inside of stem but they decided that they would rather gain control because whoever controls the core has ultimate control over the you know in, in of the virtual world in stem so when they turned heel and decided to be selfish well the last resort was to call in sebastian and that's how you join in so it turns out that the daughter and the wife are still alive and inside STEM with you. And you were going in to save the daughter. But the wife has been there for so long that her mentality also has affected her. And she's gained new abilities on the inside as well. So now she's not only commanding this white liquided viscous goop. But also she has like these, she can solidify it in a sense. So it looks like ice or whatnot. I can't tell what it is, but it, it, it somewhat freezes people in place and causes them to shatter. So I, I guess we can attest it to ice, but it's, it's hard to say. But her mentality that causes things to go awry, not only was the stress put on the core and the other minds powerful minds combating one another was warping the physical i guess you could say yeah the physical areas in 
this virtual world but also isn't that like um what's what i'm looking for uh kind of a oxymoron there but uh yeah the physical virtual places were being warped and completely disconnected from one another like city hall was a completely separate piece of land that was floating in the air and upside down above your head and you had to transport yourself there via interconnecting tunnels between these areas and everything in there was just becoming unstable which is a beautiful idea in itself you know because if you think about it Ruvik in the first game he was the one mind that built stem and he understood it completely and him being the core of the first stem project means he had a not only his full understanding would keep things together in a better sense but also his motivation for keeping control was very powerful so because the core is a young child children are very impressionable and things that they learn are also almost remembered for life and they learn it from others so what they're implying or what i've gathered from this is that her young child mind was easily i won't say influenced but malleable to things that she was not aware of or things that she's not very you know uh basically children don't have the mental fortitude to combat against manipulation from say a cult leader and uh the influence of an artistic mind you know so that of course you know they had a, a more control over her than she did herself and it makes so much sense it's great it's great and another thing that i gather from it is that the another thing that the game does great it is a rendition of The Last of Us, but I will be fair. The Last of Us is completely inspired by Resident Evil. So, and be it Shinji Mikami at Tango Gameworks, who is, he did Resident Evil, okay? He's the guy who produced Resident Evil, okay? One and two. I'm not sure if he had a hand in three. He also did Resident Evil 4, and he went on to make other games but namely you know the evil within one and two so of course he would take inspiration from those that took inspiration from him and he made a great game with the evil within two the crafting system works great the only system that was taken out from the first game um was the burning and matches system which is very i won't say it's a bad thing but it's not a good thing either because the matches system was unique and it was new but it was a bit slapstick and very weird. It was hard to take it serious, but as a gameplay mechanic, it was ingenious. Now, the point that I've um, pulled from this is, I think that the reason they made that choice fits within the lore because Ruvik himself, because of him being burned as a child and losing a friend in a fire, he has a deep rooted fear of flames. Therefore, fire was the most powerful thing in his mind when he was the core of STEM. Therefore, his brain has accepted the fact that once something is burned, it's gone forever, which is what happened to his best friend. Now, however, it's more free reign. She doesn't have hard learned facts or stuck ways when it, when regard in regards to his daughter uh lily her being the core now is a completely different ball game a different understanding of physics and what is the most powerful and you know least powerful in that world so i like that idea and it makes sense and it's fine for a gameplay aspect of course another thing about that is the the reason that the match system existed in the first game is because there was no guarantee that the characters were dead and they were generally speaking very tanky so you would be behooved to try your best to trip them up in the leg by shooting them in the leg and then burning the body early without having to waste too much ammo however when it comes to the evil within two you literally have to dispatch enemies or clear them out in certain instances. So not only did they add the stealth mechanic, but also you're more inclined to completely neutralize character, neutralize enemies, excuse me. So yeah, it, it, it makes a lot of sense to me. And the enemy design, oh my goodness, the art, bro. The enemy design, like, okay, let's be real here. Like one of the easiest ways to make a creepy horror character or horror enemy is just take a bunch of stuff, Take a bunch of characters, take a bunch of humans and body parts and just amalgamate them all together into one. Make one creature huge 
and give it a bunch of different heads okay it's completely grotesque and ugly because it looks unnatural to the human eye um take for instance silent hill 2 which is i'm glad i uh, transitioned into that if you think about silent hill 2 the characters in their game which was ingenious were made up of legs that were sewn at the waist to another pair of legs that's very unsettling and they've and and it's it's that type of dysmorphed body horror that makes for good enemy design when it comes to horror games and they've taken this and they turned it up to 11 and a half it's great some enemies are so disgusting to me i just oh i just hate the idea of even stealthing around them like they 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 make me sick and you know some some situations that i found myself in like the 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 biggest thing always made me harken back to saying damn this reminds me so much of silent hill the good days of silent hill two and three so i was like whoa that's pretty good uh two three and shattered memories are most likely as most would say the definitive experiences of silent hill well i guess you could, you could include one some people still love one but honestly this game feels the most silent hill than any game i've played in a long time where they make it open world but not so open that it's just a big old map they just made it more open in your linear progression whereas you have choices where not only you have side missions and smaller instances that happen but also your main mission that you work your way toward so it's not just gameplay to walk down the hallway and do the next thing but it's also gameplay to make your way to your next objective you don't get to exhale until you get to your next uh waypoint that marks the next cutscene, and that's ingenious and i love it and it was the smartest thing that they could ever do because consider this i played on the hardest difficulty available when you first cold boot the game meaning all you have the options between easy normal and nightmare nightmare difficulty being hard difficulty was so good i honestly can't i can't i can't stress this enough how good this they limit the ammo you get of course you know the, the ammo drops are very rare um gunpowder to craft ammo is very rare um some guns i never even had to upgrade nor make ammo for like ever some guns just didn't get any love i had to pick a gun and let it be my trusty and fall back on the extras and it was great the main two guns I fall back on were basically, well, not fall back on, but my main frontline weapons were the pistol, of course, and the shotgun. And I fall back to the crossbow. After the crossbow, there's nothing but, there's a there's plenty of other weapons, but they don't really get much upgrade love from me. It's usually what the, your additional weapons are, sniper rifle. You have other variances of the handgun, silence and uh, infrared beam. You have your boomstick shotgun, your double barrel sawed off. You have a, what else am I thinking? Oh, and an, and an assault, a little, 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 an assault rifle. Now, with all of these options, you don't always need to use them all especially since ammo is so scarce so i found myself using them only when absolutely necessary and boy was it it I, i'd say the difficulty was hard but it was never a chore it was just me being punished for the choices i made knowing the things that i have available say for instance the crossbow bolt yeah it shoots bolts with different properties but it can also be used to set up traps so shoot it on the wall and it'll set up a trip wire and you could lead the enemies into it and then funnel them all in for one good explosion dart and boom, you've killed five enemies in one in, in two bolts. You've killed five enemies, whether you use a smoke bolt to stun them all or whether you use an electric bolt to stun them all. You've made the most out of the little bit that you have. And that's what survival horror is supposed to be. And I love it. It's so good. It's delicious, yo. Like I can't I can't get over it. I can't get enough of it. Like that harder difficulty was everything and I'm glad that I chose it for my first playthrough because I felt like I triumphed every time I beat an instance or completed an encounter. It felt like I overcame something and earned a reward. And that was amazing. So oh, I, I just I loved it. Um, now, as far as the story, 
because I went on a huge tangent to get back on that the story spoilers. Basically, Myra, his wife, was doing her best to protect her, but what was affecting her mental state and making her unstable inside of STEM was her maternal instincts. She could not even fathom the idea of letting her child leave that safe area, that that place that she convinced herself of being safe, which was inside that simulation. She convinced herself that the safest place for her daughter could be there and that she's the only one that could protect her. It's like, and that's the mindset that got her through this you know her daughter being in a simulation thus far and keeping her out of the hands of theodore and the italian photographer guy i keep calling him giorno but i can't remember was it stefani i think his name was stefani but yeah keeping her daughter out of the hands of stefani and theodore these power hungry people that wanted to control stem using her for you know as as catalyst for the unlimited power that's the whole point that's the whole point and i like that so her maternal instincts was just, you know, having her not only fight against those real threats, but she was combating against uh, Sebastian as well, the main character that you play. And he had to convince her that this was not the place for her. And, you know, ultimately it ended in a boss fight and she her plan was to stay behind anyway and become the new core after the daughter was removed as the core. So now that his daughter was removed as a core. She stays in. You beat the boss and. You all go and live an ordinary life. He even asked the question, are we really in the real world or am I still in STEM? You know, just to get the um, inception thing out of the way, you know, because that's what everybody would assume, of course, with this type of um, lore and story exposition. So, yeah, makes sense. I, I just love it, bro. They they thought about everything. They thought about everything with all of the latest, you know, most popular tropes and conceptual you know interpretations in media of this type of story and they covered as many bases as they could and i liked it i liked it a lot it was good especially in the early stages of the game when you playing that hardest difficulty boy the early stages of that game is super scary and very hard and the horror transforms from oh my god what's gonna pop out and then you get familiar with that and you know how to play the game after a few hours and the horror still persists because it turn, it transforms from that to, oh, my God, how many bullets do I have left for what may be coming? You know what I mean? Like it, when it starts building suspense and you might be coming upon a fight, you're like, man, I don't think I have enough. And then they bait and switch. you. And it's like, nah, you thought it was going to be a fight, but it's not. Here's a little safe spot. And here's some materials. OK, cool. And then on your way out of this safe spot, then something jumps up at you and you get scared like that's ingenious it hits you where you wouldn't expect it and it subverts your expectations several times it never lets you get comfortable the game was great it's a solid eight and a half no more than a nine out of ten it's almost a masterpiece in what survival horror should be a master class and i enjoyed it and i would debate with anybody about this anybody so yeah that was the evil then too I enjoyed it so much. Um, I would put the spoilers in, but let's be honest. It's an old game and people be real with me, y'all. All right. Y'all don't play video games out there. And if you do, you don't really have the time, especially if you play a multiplayer game that you play every day and you have to grind on. So, yeah, nah, I, I be wanting to do like spoiler markers for y'all and stuff like that. But, bruh, come on, be real with yourself. Are you going to play these games? Will you find the time? Do you like it as much as I do? Will you like it as much as I did? So, yeah, I mean, just to be fair. But if there's a demand for spoiler counters, then I will put that in. But the reason that I don't put in spoiler counters as often as, you know, that often is because only one person is asked for. Them. Like, and I don't even know if that one person still watches. So I can't really just say that it's really that much of a demand but i'm willing to do it for you guys i just don't want to overwork this is a one-man show this is a one-man show and not only am i do i get busy with the photography business and 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 you know what i'm saying videography cinematography and stuff like that like not only am i busy with that but also my hobbies take up a lot of time as well so <sighs> i'm doing a lot as is and i wanted to be for you all rather than just me doing it because so anywho it's about time to jump right on into the news. 
Now, first thing on the docket, Ubisoft announces Ubisoft Connect retires Uplay. Now, I'm pretty sure everybody should be somewhat familiar, but if you just never known or never looked into it, this whole Uplay system is something that Ubisoft started way back, like, I don't know, what, 2011, 2012? And basically the whole premise of it was... Every Ubisoft game that you play will have a Ubisoft account connected to them and you can earn rewards and get achievements and do this, that and the third, no matter what system you're playing on. So it was to connect all of your Ubisoft games, despite the platform that you play on. And basically, they're just switching it over to Ubisoft Connect. It's pretty much the same premise. Uh, I've read the article and it doesn't seem like they're making huge changes to how it operates. Um, basically, it's just, you know, activities, achievements, news feeds, uh, tips and, you know, advice in game, things like that. So, yeah. And stats and leaderboards, which honestly, I never really care for you play. The majority of people never really cared for you play. I honestly don't know why it exists. Um, eh. But yeah. And they're bringing in the service uh, is coming to the Stadia, the NVIDIA GeForce Now and Amazon Luna later this year. So this is not really like huge news, but news nonetheless. I was surprised that Uplay was even still cared about. So there you have that. So let's jump on over to the next thing. Basically, they're just rebranding. That's the long and short of it. Too long didn't read. They're rebranding and getting ready for the next generation of consoles. Now, over on KitGuru.net by Matthew Wilson. We have an article stating that, well, to give the premise, to give the premise of this, the, the title of this article is Deleting Facebook Now Also Removes Oculus Purchases and Account Information. Now, of course, we've reported like about, it was it was either last week or the week before, but it was news surfaced that your Oculus, the new Oculus, now being owned by Facebook, requires a Facebook account to use. So if you delete your Facebook, it also will delete your Oculus purchases and account information, your trophies, your save files that are in the cloud, everything tied to it will be gone. This is now basically what it's saying is everybody who plays on the Oculus will be required to use their official Facebook account instead of making a new Facebook account to use the Oculus separately. So if you now it can't now if for those who really love the Oculus and just have to have it, then it would be smart to make a new Facebook as your own name, make a clone Facebook account and just use it specifically for the Oculus. That would be smart. But honestly and truthfully, this is trash. This is trash to the point where. We're getting to, it was bad enough that social media and social interaction and social engagement was ruining a lot of gameplay elements and designs. But now we're getting to the point where they're trying to make social media a necessity with your gaming. Now, this is kind of quiet so far because it's, it's VR and it's Oculus. So there's like a small margin of people who gives a damn. But honestly, I don't want to see this escalate at all. This is terrible. We cannot have this. I cannot stress this enough that we cannot have this go on. OK, this is terrible because the use of the product being tied to a completely separate corporation and its services is a terrible move, in my opinion. I, I think it's a terrible move be simply because there are other VR kits out there aside from the Oculus. It is not the only one. It's not the sole VR hardware. So for those who would not like this feature, this I, I won't call it a feature. For those who don't like this, um, this burden, they could easily choose to go with a different piece of hardware. So, hey, who can get mad at them if they choose to do so? Now, another thing. The tweet that announced it by Six Live, important VR PSA, your Oculus profile being tied to Facebook. It shows a screenshot of deactivation and deletion. If you want to take a break from Facebook, you can deactivate your account. If you want to permanently delete your Facebook account, let us know. Deactivate account. Deleting, deactivating your account can be temporary. Your profile will be disabled and your name and photos will be removed from most things you've shared. 
you also will not be able to access Oculus products or your Oculus information. You'll be able to continue using Messenger. So that's the official tweet. And it was put out on the 22nd, 2.44 p.m. And I, I find this, I, I don't know what else to say about this. It's, it's just disgusting to me. Because imagine a world where you, if, like, say if, um, Twitter tried to get in on, you know, some type of uh gaming or whatnot and you have to you you're required to it's it's I don't even want to draw the parallel. It's just disgusting. We can't have that. It's not okay. And the Oculus needs to fail because of this. Screw these guys, they're wrong for it. I I I can't even nah. Next on the docket over at Nintendo Life, written by Liam Doolin. Now, this fire emblem has a 30 year anniversary. And Nintendo has agreed to release the Fire Emblem Shadow Dragon and the Blade of Light to the West for the first time ever. And it's supposed to be available for only a limited time. And that's the catch. OK, the limited time release once again, only being available on the Switch eShop until March 31st, 2021. <sighs> this being digital is a problem. And. I don't know. Has they have they announced anything about a physical? Because I see a bunch of um, there's a bunch of memorabilia and things that's supposed to come along with it. But I'm not sure. I think there's supposed to be a physical. Yeah. With a bunch of different things. But um, this limited release. Let me see. Replica game pack art piece with a game sleeve on the NES, uh, an NES game sleeve and a digital game download. So it's not a physical cartridge of course, to make it affordable. But um, here's the thing. This whole thing's supposed to come with that replica. It's supposed to come with a replica box with an instruction booklet and a map, a uh, deluxe art book, of course, and a Nintendo Power collectible, similar to the Nintendo Power, I guess, from the from the original release. I'm not sure. But here's here's the important part. All right. This article, what we're talking about today is that scalpers are already listing this game this release is already being listed by scalpers and of course i'm pretty sure it's more than double the price because of these limited releases this is getting ridiculous now i kind of kicked myself in the foot for not getting in on that mario 3d all-stars a limited release for the switch but honestly i don't think getting in on this will be that advantageous because the fire emblem fan base although very loud and you know livid but I don't think they're that big. I'm not sure. Elsewise, though, this is uh, getting out of hand. I don't know what type of system they could implement in order to get rid of scalpers, but something, some, some got to shake. I just—it's been a lot of disgusting news so far. Damn. Anyway, next on the docket, comicbook.com. GameStop accidentally makes multiple games free by Tyler Fisher. Uh, apparently, GameStop mistakenly listed a bunch of games for. Well, let's not say, yeah, some games were free. Some were like a little as four bucks. And there's been some people getting entire Nintendo Switches for four bucks. Now, there's a guy on Twitter named Omni Game Player who ordered a Switch Lite for four bucks. And he's still waiting to see if it's going to be shipped. Now, some other people have announced uh, on Twitter and gave some updates when I followed this up that um, some of the orders are being canceled. However... If a lot of people got away with this, that will cost them, oh, I won't say millions, but thousands, sure. A few thousands. For sure. And GameStop, in the position that they've been, especially with the pandemic, they really don't need these type of problems, I guess. But who cares? I mean, they screw people over all the time. Hell. Either way, this is what's been going on. This, I think this is like the second time this has happened in, in not too long. I think this happened like, what, about two months ago? I think they did this by mistake. Or was it another site? No, that was Target. A month ago, that was Target uh, listing PS4 uh, peripherals for hella cheap. But I think it was for the pre-order price. I think that was pre-order price. But um, yeah, this shit crazy. Anyways, I'm still following up on that story and I'm checking in on that guy periodically just to make sure to see if he's going to get his switch. Because he hasn't updated. He said it still is pending on shipping. So we'll have to see. Next on the docket at VG247. 
there was rumors about a Silent Hill PlayStation 5 reboot. Now, I saw this rumor, I think last week or the week before, but I try my best not to report on rumors. But this rumor in particular is very interesting because there also has been things surfaced about Kojima working on a new project. And Silent Hill PS5 reboot rumors have become a little more credible because of people watching Kojima. And basically, they had an interview with this guy, uh, Khan... What was this? What was his full name? Excuse me. Khan something. Uh, uh, M- Imran Khan from Kind of Funny. And he recently said on a podcast that they were uh, credible, according to this article. And his quote was, I think the rumors are credible. And I know that the people who are rumored to be involved in Silent Hill are working on something. So, yeah, that's all we have to go off of. It's a very small little, you know, take, but... It's a possibility. We might be getting some new Silent Hill out of Kojima. We might get the PT that we always wanted. And speaking of PT, if you remember uh, the article that we reported on with them saying that uh, PT will not be able to be transferred to the PlayStation 5, of course, the homebrew and hacking scene will beg to differ because PT is fully playable as of right now um, thanks to hackers and modders. So this is good news in itself. And in time, maybe even be able to port it over to PC. Who knows what might happen? Although it'd be hella difficult. But if they could get a hold to the source code um, somehow, who knows how. But if they could, then yeah. Who knows what they could do? And it's just a matter of time. It's just a matter of time, man. It's just a matter of time. Every other console has fallen before. The only consoles that don't get completely hacked and modded are ones that people don't care about like the xbox the original xbox just recently got an emulator because a good emulator excuse me and it took this long because there's not many games that people actually care that much about on the original xbox it was not that big of a deal um when it came to its exclusives and all of those games were either playable on another platform or better on another platform especially when it came to its third parties so all all these xbox games were like pretty you know lackluster and just plain weird xbox was always like that third sibling it didn't really like you know glow up until the 360 days and even then that was like a rough because <laughs> of the uh red ring but anywho let's not go on that tangent basically we might be getting a new silent hill and i'm all for that i love to have that especially if kojima's behind it kojima's a freaking genius he hits it out of the park nine times out of ten people try to really let his work go over their head on purpose just so they can call him a hack but to be honest the guy's a genius all right love kojima love him all right um and lastly on the docket, and certainly not least, but uh, not only do we now have crossplay on the Apex Legends, but it is also coming to Steam next month. So it looks like Origin is going to be making a little deal with Steam and porting it over, which would be understandable. I mean, it will be easier for people to download and uh, play the game, honestly, but... Um, I think it'll drive up PC usage as well because most people would rather just open their Steam and go. That's where their library is, you know. I mean, having the, all these other uh, storefronts, all these other DRMs, and, um, you know, having the Epic Game Store, then Origin, then you got freaking... Uh, matter of fact, let me open right here on my computer right now. Um, thank God that Riot doesn't have this. You know, they just have their games separate, but... Um, you got a bl- battle.net for Blizzard games and active. You got you play from Ubisoft, which, you know, we've already uh, established is going to be uh, Ubisoft Connect soon. But that's its own, you know, PC store in itself. Then you got Origin and Steam, like all these different. It's it's a bit much, bro. Like, I would think about what do I want to play? And then I'd say, okay, I want to play this, but where is it installed from? And I've even taken instances where I just go to the EXE. Like, sometimes you could just, you know, you just feel like just go to the EXE. You know, you just, bam, pull it up in your Explorer or Control-R and run it. But 
then you'll get a prompt and it'll crash the game purposely and you'll say uh, you have to boot the game through Origin or you have to boot the game through the Epic Game Store. Like that's disgusting. So, hey, it being on Steam and I see it more often, I might actually choose to play it more often. But I do play it quite a bit as is because I love me some Apex. That movement is great. Man, I'm, I've been enjoying this monitor as well, bro. My my performance has skyrocketed thanks to this monitor and I, I wouldn't have it. I, I I wouldn't have it any worse. I wouldn't. It's 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 a whole new world. So anyway, um, that's everything on the docket. I think I can't uh, see any other news that's happened this week. The only other huge news that's happened, like right after last week's podcast, was um, what's her name, the politician chick that uh, decided to stream on Twitch. Yeah, clearly, um, you know, I do this for a living because uh, that politician chick tells you so much, huh? Um. What's her name? What's her name? What's her name? Ah, Alexandra Os- o- o- Ocasio-Cortez. <sighs> but t- she needs a nickname. Um. So, yeah, she set it up. A tw- she set up a Twitch channel and played Among Us for one night and got like freaking. I don't know how many people to watch her, but it was like thousands of thousands. And I'm, it's just ridiculous. Four hundred thousand people to watch her play Among Us like this is crazy this is crazy i i that that kind of worries me a bit that politicians and politics being so popular on twitch it's like political nonsense are just getting further and further into gaming further and further into gaming like it's gaming is becoming more and more industrialized and i don't really like it it's not really bothering me so far but it's hitting the nba crew real hard like 2k21 is gonna be it's, it's gonna have unskippable ads Despite it being a full price game. Think about that. Think about that. It's going to have unskippable ads. Now, I saw a take on this at the uh, Castle Super B. Shout out to the Wooly and Pat. <clears throat> Best friends. And he had an inter- interesting take on this real quick. Basically, his whole premise was, okay, f- basketball and football, these sports, all of these sports are mainly made for advertisement. They're made for promotion. They're made for just getting brands and making sure as many people see these brands as much these athletes get paid millions of dollars to get a tattoo of a brand on their body they millions of dollars millions and billions get spent every super bowl and nba finals just for a slot for a commercial so i mean yeah it's hitting them as to be expected but that's that can be a slippery slope that i don't want to slide down but anywho before we get into our old man rants about the old days of gaming let's go ahead and sign out and uh hopefully y'all can look forward to the next week because i think we got some big things coming on the horizon when it comes to the graphics card news um there was an article that i did not implement because it was strictly based on rumors of two models that nvidia um canceled to release and also all of these cards have been out of stock for a long time speaking of which as of right now there is an october sale on new egg for anybody who needs a, a psu evga has a gold plus psu on sale for like 140 or something like that i think it said and it's a 750 watt and it's super good price so hop on that if you can if you need to you know what i'm saying jump on it and uh yeah what else is there to say all in all i guess we can go ahead and hit it here so follow me on twitter at slim cognito mode and don't forget to check me out over on twitch slim cognito entertainment and we're gonna be streaming some more stuff because i'm gonna find a, a smaller i think i have a smaller you know halloween themed horror game that we could uh, stream up until halloween and i'm hopefully we're gonna have an among us halloween stream so this is the plan guys hopefully it'll work and anybody listening that would like to join in please just let me know hit me up on the twitter and we'll get you into the discords necessary in order to play some among us so please all right we need some people i want to make this happen all in all give me a subscribe like a comment if you didn't like it go ahead and dislike it and always remember the channel motto all right intentions are the most important actions ain't nothing but loud and words don't mean a damn thing take care yourselves out there and peace
No. No, 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 you didn't see shit. Fuck out the way. Oh, wow. Video games, bruh. You playing the evil within two. I like it, Kudji. Wow. That's so ass. That's so ass. Okay, 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 okay. So, I'm, uh, oh, I've never been so pissed. Oh my god. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. calm down. Uh,